Thank you, Thank Sir, you Action Sir Action Slacks, Slacks for not calling, not calling us by our real name, name just casters, casters as if we're just another, another cog, cog in the wheel that is Midas, Midas mode. mode. Pretty, Pretty typical. typical. But yep, so I'm yep, here with Raximus. Great. Great. One and only. How's it going, buddy? It's going pretty great. We have <clears throat> Pangolier and Dark Willow in our game on the same I team know. as well. I'm, I'm going to have Jesus. some issues calling these fights with the, with the actual spell names and whatnot, but cool thing here is tomato is the position one dark will. will. I, I have yet to see that, see that person. person. Well, it is position one, but he's in the mid lane. I guess maybe he's the only one that's played it, because... It, that seems pretty likely, but position yep. four, we saw this earlier with Jerax playing the Pangolier. Weeha will be getting it this time. He's been practicing, practicing. in the pubs or not. But should be a pretty, pretty freaking... freaking... Yeah, you're right, right though. Tomato's obviously going to be mid here. Um, Hezu. Hezu. As, As Trent, Trent was talking about, played Venge offline off and Captain Strap. Didn't go to it, so in fact, Venge was one of the highest cost heroes in this entire game. Yeah, and I'd say for a pretty good reason, right? The new changes to the Vengeance aura where you have the illusions come out seems very strong. Good? I think it's super good. Super good? Super okay, good. Okay, 1 to 10, 10 being OP. How I, don't, I don't have a number. So <laughs> we're going to have to see, maybe. You need to tell me a number now. All right, all right. Um, okay, so it's not only the uh, illusion change, right? You have the talents to go along with it, too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's give it a, a 7. Maybe an 8. What is it, 500? That, that is quite high, actually. Quite good and deep. What would you rate it? Go ahead, Brax, as we fix some audio issues here. Okay, Crystallize is giving him the beatdown with the tree. This thing is ridiculous, by the way. It's so good. I can't tell if it was a nerf or a buff. Like he obviously lost buff. some damage in the grow. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But so what happened? He lost move speed. He lost damage with the grow, and then mm -hmm. in tree return... grab was changed a decent amount. It's the five tree grab, no matter what. Now. Yep, it looks like a. It honestly looks like a one point wonder kind of skill, right? Where you can go back to maxing the avalanche and stuff, and the avalanche and toss. So we're gonna see a dual lane here, mid Dendi and Roger versus Kezu and Tomato. So Kezu playing support this. Oh no, I guess it. Actually, he is taking... support. Okay. Well, support. well, they have a stand-in, right? They have uh, our Viper player, Gorg. I don't oh. know how to say his name. Oh, it's Gork. Okay, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, so I was interested to see how they do that as well. But Okay, so how strong is this Dark Willow hero in a dual lane made against a vulnerable hero like the Shadow Fiend, right? Is the Rubik support going to be able to compensate for the weakness and help him get early souls? Or is this just a massacre? Well, right, Dark Willow, this hero does a ton of damage. I think it's... I assume first blood's probably going to be in that bottom lane. Weeha going to town against Seneko on the Tide Hunter. Still has his... <laughs> <laughs> wrong direction there, Weeha. It's okay. It just looks so goofy, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty cool yeah. hero, though. I've had a lot of fun my... watching it, and Captain's Draft has been. Well, I saw Ice 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 play. It kind of spoiled me because nobody else really picked it up. Yeah, that's true. When Ice 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 whips out all these new heroes in the off lane, it's... it definitely spoils you. Bot lane. They're going to be pushing up here. Navi is Seneko and Crystallize. This will be a position, I assume, 5 since it is Seneko. Tide Hunter. He's going to go down on Weeha right now. But... You know, he's not too bad at zoning out the Pangolier, especially because Tiny's pretty strong in lane 2, right? He can always just toss the tree at him or run it and stun. Mid lane, Shadow Realm actually dodges Magic Missile. Very nicely done. Damage to Roger in the meantime. On the other side of the map, though, Sinner's gonna steal the rune. Oh no. Decrepify on himself, so he'll be healthy. Alright, so how are these lanes going? We have General in the offlane. Pugna, level 2.5, Windlace. I mean, he's got a decent amount of gold, 3 last hits against a, a Viper with. This is essentially a tri lane, right? I mean, Spirit Breaker and Venge have spent. Not really Venge, I guess Venge rotated after the, uh, the bounty rune at 2 minutes, but. You know, General could die. They're wrapping around. Yep, charge. Oh, he tried to get it off. Oh no, he's TPing out. Oh, we're gonna oh. see first blood on the other side though. It's like mid. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the lane that I'm not watching. Excellent. Good camera work, Suns fan. Excellent but job. Nicely Dark done. Yeah, I mean, he was all alone though. So in a one v two, obviously you're gonna be. I've been hyping up this hero quite a bit, but. So with the Shadow Realm, isn't it super hard for him to die? To like, uh, well, I guess the Rubik Lift is instant, right? So he's still gonna get raised afterwards. Yeah, mostly. It's not like a destroy from like a Venge Stun or anything, so. Echo taking so much damage. Crash is available, and Weeha's actually going to take that okay. kill for himself. I wish I had caught the beginning of that because that's uh, it's very interesting. I wonder if he was just low on regen on uh, health because he's been trading so many hits with the Pangolier. Shadow Run. Top lane, we're going to have a charge onto General. Just have to prep fight, but there's a magic missile. Sinner attempting to block. Oh, the Will that be enough to regen him up? 
Oh my Getting god. Quite low charges up in two seconds. Can they get vision? They have vision. The ward there, so They're in. The answer to that is absolutely into the howl. Last right click from Alright, nice one. Seneco TPing in. Alright, Cinder, you gotta get out of there. A lot of trouble. No mana. Oh He's boy. Have 30 HP. He needs three mana to TP. Make it. There's no way. I know Cinder. Where's your I face? Know Cinder, oh. I'm gonna bring him down. Oh. Mid lane. Venge. Oh. Might be able to come in. I guess not. No. Oh, that was a miss. Oh, that's so sad. You could miss uphill with the Shadow Realm. Oh, yeah. that, that's Jesus. such a nerf to the hero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, One of its thing... many drawbacks, of course. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful okay. ability. The skill that you typically will... Well, first, reach yep. damage is max. It's the the mini Slark ultimate with the bonus damage and the empowered auto we attack, basically. a lot basically. of bounty room battles here. Top lane charge will connect. Seneko's here with the anchor smash. He's gonna get a lot of damage. A nice, timely bash by Cinderwind. Okay, he's not... Mana for yeah, a no stun mana. here. Even Viper's rotating in, but... Uh... Might just have to back up. Seneko's looking There's very the break dead. that you were talking about earlier with the Nether Toxin being very strong. But it is only a support side hunter at the end of the day. One more Nether Toxin takes him down. So Gorky McGorky! Is that, for... is that how you say his name? I don't know, dude. That's, I, I changed it up quite a bit in Captain's Breath. Alright, well now that's how it is. So the uh, Dark Willow, okay, they're charging mid, well, they're around mid to potentially gank up Shadow Fiend, but I was gonna say, not doing maybe as well as we expected. Yeah. Well, I guess it's probably about to change. First round, double TP action, he's gonna get the stun off. There's the Telekinesis to fall into the Anchor Smash and into All the right. raise. That is a dead Dark Willow for the second time this game. Disastrous, right? This is like a, uh... I mean, she seems pretty lane dominant with her abilities and dying to Shadow Fiend like that. SF has max souls, is gonna be pretty tanky. I don't know, you expect uh, the combo of like Spirit Breaker, Venge, and Dark Willow to be able to kill almost any mid hero. Of course, Shadow Fiend did have the level advantage at that point because of the earlier kill, and they're gonna try that for it again. There's the oh, no. Shadow Realm is down, and that is gonna be another easy kill for Navi. They give it to Dendi, and Cinder is very angry about this, gets the charge off, but then runs away immediately. All right, so that's the the back-to-back -back deaths where he already TP'd in, so now he has to make the long walk of shame back with no boots. He's actually full boots money away from boots. Top lane in the meantime, we have the Nether Toxin coming through. Decrepify TP will be successful. But Gork still has his lane all to his lonesome. As bottom lane now. Yep, Seneco. Kezu, run into Seneco. Magic Missile off. Still have a Swash Buckle available. Get to think this will be a kill one he misses. <laughs> Wuhan needs to practice this hero, apparently. I will be TMing him right after the game. Good, Put good. Right Roger, there's a shield crash. Telekinesis will stun. And Roger, in a lot of trouble. Chris White just throws a tree in the back of his head. Here, the kill for himself. But we're talking about mid lane, Dark Willow. The one disadvantage that you have is against the Shadow Fiend, especially, you cannot push this. Yep, very true. You know, she keeps using the uh, Shadow Realm aggressively to hit SF to harass him, but she's missed like two or three times on uphill. And, uh, so you're saying she's losing because of RNG? No, no, no. This is just like a, <laughs> this is like a fun fact. This is a smash. Oh, that's in the mid a fun fact. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> it's bad. If that's a fun fact, then oh. So, so I want to talk a bit more about Dark Willow because we haven't really seen too much of this hero. He's not getting off to a good start. No. 0 three at this point of the game. No boots. And uh, I mean, it looks like he has no game at the moment, right? Even the offlane Pugna is at a higher level than him. But um. No, this hero has utility, right? You've got the big AoE root, the ultimate, the big fear as well, and up top general getting charged. E. Trying to turn this around, the cursed crown is there, they're gonna get a double stun out of it as a result. Cinder is still only level 2 though, Tomato gets down, the Bramble, general still relatively healthy. The crap fight into the blaster, there's the bash again from Cinder, one more right click, should take him down. Seneco is now attempting to kill Tomato, that is a sad day if you are a mid or, bad, mid or beat fan right now. Might, might be able to take, take this for himself, though. Oh, no, boy. There's the Crepify again into the... Gosh, he's attempting to TP out. He will do so successfully, but... Still, that is a position 5 Tidehunter killing your... Your mid... Yep. Dark Willow. We got a smoke to the mid lane for mid or feed here. Um... Hopefully they can kill this Tablex quite Jump the Rolling Thunder, that's one proc hitting the... The other side of the wall, and oh. nicely done from Weeha. Beautifully bounced oh, off the wall. Roger, shield crash on top of it. They have a stun here, no. On cooldown still, the Telekinesis has done both. Weeha's going really deep though, General's here. It's a decrepit fight into the Nether Blast. That'll force Tangelier back, but there's the Nether Toxic Dwarf. Getting off the ultimate, looks like Pugna will die here. And Cinder cleans up the Rubik on the backside, so Nether Feed coming back with a lot of aggression. Alright, Tiny TP's in too, let's see if he can clean anything up. 
Or your <laughs> scouts him out, and he will die, I would assume. Although Crystallize is going to focus on the Cinderin. Might need to throw the tree the other direction instead. Cinderin is gone. But there's the gush. Action packed game in Midas mode. Great. That's right. You know, we just had a 3k gold lead in favor of Navi, and now all of a sudden it's only at a 1k. Mid or feed bringing it back. I have no idea what's going on in these team fights. They are chaotic, they are crazy. Spells are being missed. I don't know what's going on. Now, I'm, I like I'm just it. really interested to see Shadow Realm popped again for general. Pretty easy counter with the Decrepify. Not a oh, lot wow. Can do. Imbalanced. Very imbalanced. Uh, it looks like Gaia's model who's yet to get boots, by the way. That's a little bit. Yeah, he's struggling big time. He will be going for a Veil of Discord to start things off. That's a pretty common build that I've seen at least support Dark, Dark Willow. He's kind of playing like support right now. Well, that was not the intention. Yes. But of course, things uh, don't always go the right way. Uh, trying to abuse the fact that Javelins are insanely powerful. They are so good. Starting off with a couple of those. The trouble here is he yeah, does have the ultimate of top lane. Another shadow Now that that's down, you have to think that Navi are aware. They pugged on six, right? Six. This is Gosh. bad. Hey, All right. Need to commentate. She dies. Yep. As we can see, he is dead. Completely gone. All right. From uh -huh. a pro player's perspective, mm -hmm. when a new hero comes out, not in captain's mode, but you do, you know, you do have captain's draft in Midas mode. Uh -huh. You practice. Prioritize. I mean, it you depends. Have to hold that All right. Top lane, general. I'm holding. A lot of trouble. Although the other way around is Dendi comes in with that newly picked up blink dagger. That's Avenge Dunzo. All right, go ahead. You know, I've been so rudely interrupted. I forgot what I was talking about. I apologize. It's the whole new hero thing. Oh, players, how much they would actually track. Of course. So I feel like when they first come out, right, everyone wants to play these heroes. Whether you're a pro player or not, it's just exciting, it's brand new. So, I imagine they're in a lot of pub games, right? They probably play against a lot of Pangoliers, a lot of Dark Willows. People get mad when you pick these heroes because they're very strong. Dendi, he looks like he's gonna be okay. Yeah, he's gonna be fine. They might just turn this around completely. With the Ravage onto two, including the neutral, Cinderin drops dead. There's the toss. Oh, Had boy. Okay, Navi are just... Rolling in this fight, they do get the position 5 5 as Rolling Thunder is here into a Terrorize! It's a lot of damage coming through, but not enough to secure themselves a kill. Tomato might be in trouble, gets the toss into the face. Oh no. And that's the... Whatever you do, don't bring up the scoreboard. We don't want to look at the death count. It's looking quite ugly, and... You know, a 3k gold lead at 11 minutes. We had a 3k gold lead at like 7 minutes before, and that's without any towers being taken. It's pretty huge. Especially when we're talking... <laughs> As we're going to the action top, General healing up, Crystallize is getting charged right now. Roger's going to TP out now, Rubik. There's the Nether Blast coming through, but General will find his way to the grave, and Crystallize still getting charged. Did he actually get off the health drop, though? It's a decent amount of health, but again, the up again. comes through, and another shield crash as well. And Cinderin finally makes it to the party, but a little bit late. We, I feel like we just saw the Rolling Thunder, and it's up again. 50 seconds cooldown at level 1? My god. Pretty cool, I have to say. It is. You know, it's one of these that feels like, um... Especially in your pubs, it probably doesn't feel too impactful, right? You've got some Dumbo bouncing around on the walls, missing everyone. But here, in a coordinated, competitive Midas mode gameplay, looks pretty good. Yeah, so bouncing off the terrain is kind of a big deal with that hero. Yep. Uh, apparently, Yule works. Have you seen that interaction? No, I have not. You roll into somebody, then you Yule. You oh. Hit them again yeah. while you're Yule. Double stun. Okay. And the way that shield crash, crash works, with, especially when you get that talent at level 50, second shield crash, Get it off a couple times. You can get it off like three or four times. Pretty That's intense. kind of cool, I guess. Like you might die here, but the trap by keeping him alive. There's the avalanche. Lots of damage coming through. Looks like we have on top of the ultimate yet again. It's canceled though. Has to get it off. There we go. You see it run away. Now pop the wall again. It's stolen by Roger. We're seeing the double thunder. Oh my god, what's going on? He's actually doing so much work, but he will fall for his effort. The general's in a lot of trouble. We'll get the ultimate from Gork. Looks like Mitterfeet is doing a nice job. That was just a zoning avalanche. And Navi on the run. Weeha coming in again. And that is going to be a third kill here for Mitterfeet. Alright, Mitterfeet starting to take over these team fights. The Rolling Thunder, it looks so impactful. Just bouncing around. And, um... <laughs> in that area especially. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's nice to see, right? Sometimes you see the people taking these wide turns instead of using all the walls to get all the proper angles and just bounce off. But 
you know, that was a fight where Navi didn't have Ravage available. And now they do, and mid or feed, they could be in some trouble if Tanako casually walks in Ravages. So it's quite rare that it happens. But Navi's coming in with a lot of damage onto Rubik. He gets on the Telekinesis, but the dice is what he's there after. Viper will get Ravaged by Seneco on a few heroes, in fact, the first round on the general. There's the ultimate from Kamada doing a lot of damage. We'll take him out by himself, but here comes Dendi with that Shadow Fiend, cleaning up as much as he can. It's a triple kill for Kamada at the end of the day. Make it four. My god. And four dead for Navi in the blink of eye. That was with the Ravage. You're seeing this combination come to fruition. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. That's one kill at least for Navi, but now Crystallize might be in a lot of trouble. Gets off the Bramble Maze, attempting to get out, and this is actually really low. One toss will finish him off pretty easily. Poor Cinderin. I don't know about this Terrorize, by the way. You can see it being used. Mm. I can kind of like hit a Malice where you can place it but not cast it like in a show. Okay. Strange. That... Well, if we were on the balance team, There'd be a lot of bad things in this game, so thank God we're not. Oh, and Roger actually still shadow around that. That's pretty cool. Wow. Pretty hard to kill him. I mean, that's even at a level one, even though it's level four right now. But a level one steal, that pretty value, I feel. Oh, I would agree. Very, very nice, especially when your uh, squishy Rubik thing is to stay alive in these fights. So. The game has been so chaotic, I don't really know what's going on. People are just battling to the death, everyone is fighting. But, um, alright, so is this the build on, uh, Pangolier, the double javelin into the defusal blade? I mean, it I, looks good. I've seen it before, we'll get to that in a second. Some charges here onto Dendi, looks like the oh pug is gonna get cleaned up by both Weeha and Tomato. The rolling oh, thunder well, coming comes. in. Roger steals the telekinesis, there's the jumping from Weeha. Dendi's baking the ult. They're gonna try to turn it around, blow up Weeha in turn, so one for one. Rest of Midafina on the run, but again, the toss comes through. No telekinesis. Seconds. Looks like this might break things up unless... ...spotted here. But it is night time. Have the scan, but it's not gonna... Yep. ...not gonna come through. Just missed. Tomato does have the available Discord now. There's a chance Tomato gets caught if, uh... Roger happens to stroll in into him. They probably know that they're there, right? They have a ward behind the tower. Well, I guess they just placed that, so... A lot of not. space being created. Gork is taking it out is. the bottom tier one. Kezu's pushing lane. Looks like they will finally find Roger. Or it's the other way around. Cinder's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna get off his, his ultimate. Ends up being a trade, a one for two. Alright. Lots of trades coming in. So one for two, but, um... Kezu casually took the mid tower, yeah. and then Orc also took bottom tower, so is that worth it for Navi? I mean, when you look at the gold swing, probably not. Yeah, right, Kezu, tons of free time for all Kezu these guys. the Helmet Dominator, by the way. So, who are you talking, Pangolier, Weeha? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so double javelin. I mean, I've seen a lot of different... We've seen Vanguard on this here, we've seen Blink Dagger a lot. Feels like people are trying to find the build for him, right? Battle Fury. But it doesn't Blink actually... Pretty, pretty good, actually. Is it? Oh, cool. Mail oh, yeah. Common pickup. And what else am I thinking? You know, I sound dumb because you're like, Cleave is pretty good for farming. And I'm like, well, duh. Mine. It is. Nobody can dispute that unless you're a range hero. But we've seen Basher, which I'm a little bit surprised by. Um, Why is that surprising? Because you? there's a cooldown on it. So you can bash one person. There is, but it's four strikes, right? So you're guaranteed almost to get one bash at least. Right, it's quite likely that you're gonna get that one bash. It's on a low cooldown, right? Eight seconds? Not bad. What? For the uh the oh. swashbuckle. Level twenty five you'll have a five second one. Wowzers. But yeah, diffuser blade is pretty core, I would say on Yeah, I would agree. It's very, very nice, tons of synergy. Yeah, but the thing I like about the hero is you, it's not like one build right now. People are Yeah, it is true. Depends on if you want to go a little bit more right click or a little more initiation with like a blue oh, dagger. Oh boy. Tank. Here comes the smoke. They weren't lying when they said they were smoking. Yeah. Roger, he's dead. Crash finishes him off. Yeah, middle of the pack in terms of net worth. How, how good he can scale into this game. Yeah, doing very, very well. You know, the uh, Rolling Thunder feels so impactful in these fights, right? Like, he ignores the Ravage, he rolls on top of the Pugna. Nice he actually runs right to the general. I have no idea he was there. He's trying to get off the... Another strike. The break is oh there on Tiny from there, just ripping him a new one. He will die to the, the neutrals. Pretty typical. 
Gotta hate those neutrals. General in the meantime, though, will be spotted out. The magic missile there. They have swaps if they really need it. Doesn't look like it will be eaten on board. As the mid or feet are just dominating. dominating. Last few minutes after being down 3k so early. You know, they're dominating, but the gold lead isn't really moving anywhere. Dendi's still super, super farmed in the Shadow Fiend. He's gone for a bit of the, uh, the caster build, right? The Blink Dagger Yules. Something where we used to see a long time ago, but not so popular anymore. I guess it's good against the Breaker, right? He can always split push freely with Blink Dagger and Yules and never be afraid. How ham is he gonna go, though? I don't How know. How deep is he gonna go? Aghanim's Refresher. Maybe he'll blow Cinder up right now. Oh, yep. God. Bye, sir. Oh, my lord. The Terrorize not there in time. In fact, it's just canceled up. Time Rubik. Fall in the mid lane. Support for support globally. Yeah, that's true. Blade now finished on. You know, when you play Spirit Breaker, you definitely expect to die <laughs> in the game, right? That's just kind of how the game goes. Especially if this Catch that captain's draft game? He went 0-19 and Dyer's they... I missed it, but I feel like that's every other game. <laughs> well, except for the one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding, Sin. <laughs> okay. So, you know, Navi have a pretty cool combo with their heroes, right? They've got the, uh... Oh, Jesus, that's a lot of damage. Good god, the javelin's... Look his passive, by the way. I don't know, it's so weird. It is a weird one. It's extremely weird. So, I don't know. But, um, you know, they got the cool, uh, Tide Hunter combo, right? They can toss them in for the Ravage if they group up, even though Tiny probably wants to be getting in there to hit people and stuff. Yeah, true. Find the old Tangalier, who's gonna get out? The Ravage will only connect on a couple here on the high ground. My god. As, a <laughs> as the question mark comes out from Weeha, bad is that, a, is that a new bounty? A bonus bounty? The question mark? They're smoking. <laughs> Man, that was a uh, very fast reaction from Actually, Yep, nicely done. This hero is uh, very squishy and hard to deal with. Like, look at his health, right? 1200 HP. But, doesn't matter. Shield Crash is actually such a cool skill. Guard will be on Dendi. Has BKB, he gets off the Yule. Yeah, nicely done. I have to... They still have the tier 1. So... They even have a lane ward there to spot him out so they can charge him from fog. That was even from smoke, but the Yules makes it so he pretty much can't die on the side lanes. Not use his skills. Threaten the ultimate, but cancel the stage. General getting charged. They have vision, oh, and he boy. just gets insta gibbed at the tree. Alright. So, how do you fight this guy? I mean, they have like a big team fight in the Ravage, right? But it doesn't actually do anything if you already got the. Rolling Thunder off, and we saw the gank, and he was able to just get out of there. I don't know, it's uh, it introduces a whole new dynamic to the game that honestly I'm not used to yet, I'm sure most people aren't either. Yeah, I'm still getting used to it on a grand scale, if you will. Crystallized, by the way, when the SMY was in this. Oh my god. He gets diffused, not trying to get up the ultimate, he oh. does get the stun off, he bounce again, so look for that shield crash. Coming through, they have vision, they do with the. He's missed a lot of these. <laughs> Lee Hawk, come on now. Come on now. You know, we praise him and then he makes us look stupid. Well, they get the kill at the end of the day, so not a big deal. Tomato in the meantime though, picks up a blink dagger. Going for a Kaya. Yep, I would say quite common. Um the Dark Willow, so obviously he was off to a very rough start. I think he started this game 0-4 or 0-5 with no boots until very, very late in the game. It looked like one of these uh, five position supports that struggled the entire game, but you know the team fight effect is still there, whether he has items or not, right? He's still going to be able to, you know, drop the big root, terrorize all the good stuff. So crazy, terrorize, same duration at all levels. <laughs> so it yeah. just costs more mana, or sorry, it's the extra cool cost the same mana. I feel like that But here's tower goes down in the way of Navi. Yep, charge up top again. Charge, but we'll cancel it. But yeah, not not, not to, to talk, talk about, about the two, the two the much, but it just it's so interesting about the way that played on a competitive level since we haven't seen a whole lot of them yet. Yep, I agree. Say they were smoked. They oh, they did not. All right, they are out of the running for that Fade bounty. That challenge and we hop. Oh, he'll use one of his abilities, the swash buckle, into the ultimate. Won't be able to get it off. The nice swap. Big swap. And there's the bramble maze on top of it. So he's gonna jump in with that bleak dagger, bouncing left and right he to coordinate that a little bit better. Finally gets it off correctly. And then he pops the DKB. It's a two for nothing. Toss. Will be used to take out Kazu. 
anticipated. Actually, the first round hits a couple heroes. Cinder in with the charge. Oh, They're gonna God. clean up Dendi now. Tomato, attempting to go after General, gets a decrepit fight into the life drain, and will finish him off in style. So one for two, make it a three for three, but Crystallize will fall. Pugna, the lone survivor from Na'Vi. Right. Uh, somehow lives despite being in a horrendous position to start that fight, but a great swap from Kesem. Yeah, big swap saving his life and pretty much saving the team fight. If uh, Pangler died early on like that, I don't think they'd have any chance of winning the fight. So, it, it looked good, right, for one team in the beginning, and then it kind of evened out, right? Both teams just traded a few kills, nothing really happened. You know, no big objectives being gained. Both teams just go back to farming. It's like, I feel like they need to, to take Roche or do something big to take it to the next level. Oh, boy. I love yeah. watching people play this hero. We <laughs> got that. <laughs> Alright, he gets one off. Crest fight there. But here comes Gork as well. And that might work. Washbuckle. So much damage. Pretty insane. It does. Those javelins as well. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot about that. Eventually, he'll turn that into an MKB, I'm sure, but yep. no rush. It seems. Of course. The Javelins are so cost-effective for these heroes. They can get a million attacks off, right? The Pangolier, Wind Ranger. Very, very nice. He'll have a... He'll probably want to get the MKB. Not, not just because of slot increase, but it's 60 damage yeah. right it's now. Yeah, it's very magic, nice. But when you turn it... Oh, sorry, it's 100 damage, but magic. The new stats on it make it uh, quite nice for a lot of these heroes to pick up, right? Previously, some heroes like uh, OD, for example, really struggled with evasion. They didn't have a good item build for it. That's a good point. All right, Pangolier uh, missed his abilities. Now he's it. bringing up the ball. To try. There's the blink. Oh, he has a wall to work with. And he has another shield crash as well. Will he get off the stun? Roger unfortunately steals the shield crash. And Swashbuckle will finish off. That right, Meanwhile, they've got Roche. Are they doing this challenge? All right, they have to wait for one minute or kill it. Two challenges. This is like some Team Fortress 2 nonsense. Some uh, some two fort here going on, <laughs> protecting the intelligence. All right, protect the flag at all costs, my friend. Dandy, can you steal it? You have BKB and Blink. You could actually just root the bounty. You know, it's it's difficult, right? You can't just casually walk into the pit when you know they're defending. <laughs> no matter how badly you want to do it, I guess you could do it with like a. Uh, like, Titus has got a blink dagger, right? He could blink in there. Yeah, that's true. They know about it. They might know, but Dendi's in a lot of trouble. Oh, Takes a lot of damage, but there's a beautiful Ravage onto four heroes, in fact. Weeha will get blown up thanks to the Ravage. Pangler's Russian. dead. They do have Terrorites to work with still, I believe. They do indeed. So it's a one for one. It's a two for one, in fact. Crystallize and Navi being zoned out right now. Has it been a minute? I wasn't keeping track. Because you might just need to take it, my friend. Forget about it the bounty. You have to worry about the win at this point. They want the cash. Rubik will be cleaned up eventually by Dark Willow. Oh it's my very god. very low though. And the Aegis is taken. I'm not 100% sure if that was after a minute. It seems like it could have been. We'll know very soon for Mystic Midas, I'm sure. Dark Willow's in a lot of trouble trying to get up the terror. Oh not boy. Fast enough. Danny will get stunned from the first round. Crystallize jumps in. Both of Kezu. Dork with absolutely no mana. Same with Crystallize. So, Rubik stole one of Dark Willow's spells and almost killed Dark Willow. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Which spell did he tell? The Yelp? The Bedlam? Yeah, yeah. It did a ridiculous amount of damage. Maybe this hero's not that imbalanced. <laughs> Maybe if you put one of these spells on Rubik, whew, then you've got a real hero. We're smoking with one guy alive. <laughs> Very likely. Yeah, I'm sitting they're going to call your bluff on this one. <laughs> yeah, General and Company. So, we saw this uh, in the last series, I actually did. Dagon Express from Pugna. Quite yep. strong. Prepify, of course. I assume he wants to get Kaya at some point. Aether Lens is range at this point. Um, is that something I, you're expecting? Or? I don't really know. I feel like he might have to go for a sort of defensive item to stay alive so he can cast his abilities. Does the uh, Rolling Thunder, does it stun through BKB through Magic? I don't think it does, right? I don't think so. Okay. Double check. We can't, oh, he's rolling right he's now. He's rolling out. Where are you at, Weeha? Okay, it does not pierce magic. That's what I thought. But all right, I mean, there's still a lot of things that he has to watch out for. He can't casually like uh, life drain or anything like that. I guess he doesn't want to because he got the dagger. But he went basher. Okay. Actually, sell a javelin. He did. This is madness. Huh? Maybe it's on the chicken. So I mean, why would it be on the, the chicken? The benefit you get of actually upgrading MKB, other than the 75% accuracy, of the fact that the damage you get, the 60 damage. Mm-hmm. Yep.
which is kind of a big deal when you're talking about a Shadow Fiend is going Axe and Scepter, by the way. Hell okay, yeah. so he's the full uh, magician, Shadow Fiend, the so spellcaster. Refresher's next, right? You have to do that. You're going this all in, you have oh, to. Oh yeah, of course. You just want to blow people up. Sick, man. Uh, he's gonna find a couple here. Beautiful initiation. Has a wall to work with. There's a terrorize into a shield crash model oh my with God. the bedlam. Just cleans up Rubik. Absolutely no problem. Looks like Crystallize is next on the list, but they don't have vision to actually clean him up. Time though. Damage being done to the tier it's Just three blasting time. her from fog, over and over. Not gonna find anybody. Obviously gonna get out safely. Makeup. All right. Already gone. The swashbuckle just barely missed him. He could have gotten bashed to cancel the team. But look at the tower. It's at 182 HP. Uh, big win for Navi, right? It looked really, really bad in the beginning. They only end up losing Roger. Do a ton of tower damage, force rotations, glyph. Not bad at all. That started as an amazing initiative. Yep. I have the important. I didn't find enough damage to kill more than Rook. Yeah, it was the the no detection problem, right? Right? Wait, how do you... Am I dumb? What's going on? You might be, but what's your question? Hey, the javelin was used for... The, the basher, basher yep. Don't worry, I was dumb. I was like, wait, where did the javelin go? <laughs> he sold the javelin easily! <laughs> that has not changed. You know, I just trusted you. I trusted what I you know. said, I mean, even though I knew it was stupid. When I'm adamant about something, I'm usually right. Dandy gets swapped in the last moment, gets charged on top of the first round oh, as well. Oh, yeah, damage. They have so much crowd control. Actually ridiculous. Even right. just Dark Lula by herself. That was very nicely baited. That's a huge kill. They've been struggling to deal with the Shadow Fiend still pushing the entire time. And then the charge again. Gets on the trap fight. Does a lot of damage to Weeha. Oh, nice the walls. Go. Did Rubik steal it? He did, but he won't have time to use it. And that is a three for nothing in the end of this engagement. Okay, very nice. But Seneko making the big plays. Cutting the wave up top, gonna get charged. I imagine he's gonna blink out the DP. Yep, he's good. But there's only one creep way for mid or feed to work with. And mid or feed, they look pretty good. They still have the Aegis, but um, perhaps they haven't acquired as big of a gold lead as they would like with the Aegis, right? But uh, I guess that's about to change, right? We're getting, tower, we're getting towers for free now. Um, they seem unfightable as long as uh, Weeha doesn't die in the very beginning. Yeah, they're just gonna keep going. They got the Vendor, Alpha Wolf, they are super, super strong. They're Shadow Fiend for 15 seconds. A lot of damage to Tidehunter. But even when Shadow Fiend comes up, that's half your souls not available. Very true. Not quite as powerful. We'll at least get the tier 3, perhaps even more. I don't think they can fight this on the side of Navi. Location down, and with that, I believe Mitter are gonna be happy with this trade. They rack for literally nothing unless they can find Kezu. Oh my god, that's half his health. Zoning. You have to walk through that very carefully. Doesn't seem possible. Aegis is popped though. Okay, so in the end, they make use of their Aegis at the very end, right? They didn't really get a whole lot before then. They end up taking two towers and a melee rack, so pretty good use of it. Uh, pretty good usage out of the Aegis. So, how have the the mind games been going? The whole we're smoking nonsense. The whole you know, nothing. Okay. And he gets swapped into the charge, gets off the blink. Here's a big ravage coming through. Weeha with a nice ultimate. Though. There's a terrorize keeping him at bay. Everybody gets to be the first to fall here. Rubik takes the Viper Strike, works very low. Remember, no Aegis to work with here. And that's good. That's good. By intellect, you have to think that's enough damage. Indeed, it is. About stunning the entirety of Navi. Like. Kezu will end up falling as well, so it's a 2 for 3. Weeha did snipe somebody on the backside. In fact, trying to go for more gets a, a basher prop for It's a dangerous place. And he gets Yules, but there's a lot of trouble. Has no shield crash for a bit, and that's a triple kill for Dendi. He has his soul back, has the Agon and Scepter, and it's pretty close to getting that 25, which I assume he's gonna go. Is Navi back, just like that? Sound reduction? Who? Dendi on 25. I, I was gonna say three damage per soul is a standard, but this game. Yeah, he's the wizard, right? Yeah, this game. He's got so many. Uh, I think the cooldown reduction is too good to pass up yeah. with the style of a build. But yeah, at the same time, you have. Yules, it works on BKB, everything. Well, I, there's also the argument for the extra necromancer or necro mastery souls, right? The soul damage with 46, you would get. Uh, I'm no mathematician. I'm sure someone can help you guys out with that. You can pull up the calculator on your computer, pull guys. Up that Don't TI worry. that TI-83 plus. Yep. Nobody's gonna get that reference. Everyone's got a phone, you guys can check it out there. 
A lot of damage to this tier. Have buybacks. Tiny. So much damage. Quite a bit. In fact, we're gonna try to push this up a bit. Try to get tier three. Different. We have to swap. BKB pop by crystallize. We get the toss off. Kids in a lot of trouble. Another strike. Have to set for now. Power for now. Oh my god. The Viper, and it comes back and heals him to full. Looks like Kez is next to fall. Four dead overall right now as we have just spawned. Okay, so. Now Mitter Feeder in a lot of trouble. <laughs> what just happened? Like, he got swapped out so he didn't get the uh, the point blank Reckling of Souls off, but it still did so much damage. Yeah. It looked oh, insane. Weehaw. He gets off the ultimate, gets Dagon right before. Trying to do as much damage to the Roger as he can. He steals Shield Crash, will be a little bit tankier than usual. Tinder and jumps in, trying to hold it to a high degree. Reha. Get up. Spells to get to the high ground. He'll jump right back in, crystallize very low. Dendi with a couple raises, he'll oh, finish boy. him off. 80 seconds on the deck, does have buyback to work with though. Viper in a lot of trouble, he's gonna be surrounded by Navi players. Tinder gets Yules, and Gork falls reckless eventually. There's the Ravage, in fact, being used. All right. Not needed. The fireworks coming out from Suneko. Right, it's very flashy. That's all you need. And one more right click, Cinder will fall. We got a little bit too late. So we got bought back, but uh, not in time. Right. I mean, you couldn't really do anything after that, perhaps. Oh, big Yules. Trouble here. Shield crash is available. Trying to get off his ultimate. Oh, will die. No. Hundred seconds on the deck. No buyback. And with the push power of Navi, you have to think this is going to be minimum two racks, maybe megas. If we got no reason Reha to stop, right unless back, though, that, that's true, he will be back in 85 seconds when he comes back from his death. <laughs> okay, so what can Tomato do here? Is he gonna be able to blow someone up? He's trying. He gets off Bedlam, Crystallize pops the BKB. He's looking mighty gets, dead. Okay, he's in a lot of trouble. Gets swapped out by Kezus, he's back up to the land. Dandy with the raises again. Terrorize is not there in time. BKB pops regardless. Okay, well, Crystallize is dead. Right click. Bedlam is stolen. He's back, so Roger's gonna have that to farm with. Very and by the way, there's there's top racks. Yeah. Everything's being pushed in that opposite lane, but Dendi will be happy with the second racks here. Kez buys back, gets the magic missile off Roger. Helps save his teammate, his comrade in arms. Charges on its way. Should be okay. Looks like he's out. All right. So, very costly defense from Mitterfeed, if you can even call it a defense. That kind of got slaughtered through the bodies out of the end of the second set of racks. Oh my Jesus God! Damage. What? Bedlam is insane. Look at the cooldown on this thing. 20 second cooldown. <laughs> That's an ultimate. I don't know what happened. Jesus, the, the illusion trying its best to take out Roger, but find it. <laughs> Look at this thing. Look at this stupid thing. Why the is it stupid? The Scepter is so good. It is good. Not good enough. It's actually not great against Pugna. Can't you just, hmm. just life drain that? Does that work? It doesn't, uh, oh, actually, I don't know. Perhaps it just instantly kills it like, uh, the Dagon. I don't know if it behaves like an illusion or if it behaves like a hero. I imagine it behaves like a hero, because I think it can get hexed, and just, it's just a sheep. Not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing as, uh, the Arc Lord and Ultimate. Has fallen. Yeah. All right. So, Suns fan, mid or feed, they were looking pretty good, but now all of a sudden they've kind of shit the bed here. Went top and fed. That is true. They got top and then fed. All right. They weren't sticking to the guns going mid or feet, not Anthem. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps yeah, these are some notes to the take lore through. of the team. Yeah. You gotta stick with it. It's important, right? You gotta play to your strengths no matter what. We get a nice defensive scan here. Young company know what's going on. God, the cooldown of the, the shield crash and the ball with the talent is... That's crazy. Like, you can time it, so... Shield crash, then... Uh, swash buckle, mm -hmm. right as you're about to land. Link, Link to that, to that area, area, get your shield crash off, off. You'll come out of out your of ultimate, ultimate, which have, have your shield crash available again. Okay. On a two second cooldown from the ultimate. Will it also apply like the, the bump from the Rolling Thunder? Yeah, no, not the bump. Okay. Uh, okay. I tested that thoroughly. Actually. Well, he's got uh, the. With Blink Dagger, you can probably do some crazy nonsense oh, yeah. with that, so. There's a lot of cool stuff. And, and Weeha, this game, you're seeing very disruptive in the fights. He's dealing a decent amount of damage. Yep. Um, but really wants to get that 25. I assume he's going to walk Look at it. I would imagine so. He's got crit stick. He's going for Daedalus. Yep. Alright, the smoke being called out, and it's actually a smoke from mid or feed. Jesus. Uh, he does have an ultimate. This could be amazing in the pit. It's terrorizing. Oh, he goes backwards. He's on the wrong side. Oh, no. Oh, boy. And it looks like Tomato just feeds his life away. Oh, that is 
truly unfortunate Kezu and company are going to try to fight this regardless. Terrorize comes out, it's not going to do a whole lot though. It actually was stolen by Rubik, so Will, of course, has to team away. And that's two dead in the blink of an eye. He's still got Ravage. Neck. And that's three, then you have to think this might be it. Better feed in game one. Oh my god, that was almost the coolest initiation I've seen. We're going to see oh, Dendi big spirit bomb. Alright, General what? kills himself. He, uh. <laughs> He gives his life for the greater good, right. right? Dandy, he's all in. Give him a... Make him feel nice. That was... I mean, you've seen... Uh, Rolling Thunder in the pit before, right? Yes, it we're just bounces. It is ridiculous. Insane. Literal perma stun. You know, there are a lot of heroes that are pretty strong in the pit, right? You think Darkseer, you think these big AoE team fights, and Rolling Thunder is no exception. Great. Got stuck on that little edge of the terrain. <laughs> And, just kept, and then he ends up going backwards. Yeah, there's a lot of cloudy things that can happen with this ability. It's not easy to use, for sure. Either way, it looks like Navi's gonna get the very least mega creeps, if not more. I would imagine so. They're, they're kind of holding back. Okay, you know, they're being very in, cautious. Then he swap on the den. He's in a lot of trouble getting quite low. Gets the Yules off. Slides right clicking Cinderin with that big stick of his. We're gonna find Dendi, though. Top, top finish off Cinderin. Looks like gonna focus on Gorm now. Ray comes through as well on the bottom side, Dendi. He's still alive, in fact. Finally. Not anymore. A four for three. That was the age of time. Just why I thought he had that age. Yep. Oh, they will get that. We Weehaw's up in five. Ramble, swap, not the greatest coordination. Oh, five back from Dendi. Dendi. TP's in. Gets off the E-Blade. In fact, into the Avalanche toss. That's going to blow up Kezu. Will they try to finish off this Rax? This question tiny. Right now, Lee Hodge is bouncing on him left, right, and center. Dendi gets Big swap. In. A lot of trouble with this illusion. illusion is very pesky, but Weeha will find his way to the grave. And a lone survivor right now is Tomato. But Navi does not get the Mega Creep still, so their feet hold. Crystallize buying back. He gets boots of travel, sells a blink dagger. They want to end this game. But you know what? Don't worry, Shannon. Weeha will be right back. 70 seconds to be right back. That's right, if they can hold out for them, then maybe they can make something happen, but... Dendi went... Oh, he's trying to get off his ultimate. That was a stolen bramble maze, I do believe. He's got the strike to actually right. Dendi, that's 120 seconds on the deck. It's a dieback. Auto in a lot of trouble, though. Gets to terrorize off. We'll be only on Crystallize. We'll run back to base. But it'll actually help him get back to the, the range track. Actually. Yep, nicely done. Take out with ease. So that is Mega Creep. Going the way of... No, they still have a range track. Hot, actually. Popped by Crystallize, Avalanche is there. Looks like Cinder is going to be the one that drops again. Why do you, why do you say that again? You're making it sound like he's just been feeding the entire game? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Bedlam does a lot of damage. Tomato, though, is still a lot of trouble with the four staff off Crystallize. With the toss, not enough damage to take him out. Crystallize will That's fall. a dieback as well. Four dead for Navi. And the range racks top still five. So Meg. You know, with all these buybacks, the gold difference isn't actually that big, right? At this stage of the game, once you take five racks and all these towers, it's probably about a 25k gold swing without all these buybacks and feeds. So let's look at the buybacks right now. The only buyback is on Sin. Okay. But if he gets Ravage off, done right. job kind of. Exactly. This is a hero that's probably going to get his abilities off before he dies in most scenarios, unless... All right. Tomato is dead. Tomato? Yep. Okay. He's dead. <laughs> Time where you just go straight up mid. I don't know though. That is a big issue. That's the again. <clears throat> he did not go mid or feet, right? He Radiant's went to top and fed. We got some problems here. But they're mid now. Oh, they're gonna try to go for drum pad. I guess so. Oh, I don't know. Pushing is not. This not is nearly uh... as strong as Navi. All right, we'll begin the tier four. This? Oh, hold on. What's going on here? We got yep. 15 seconds. Up in 15 seconds. There's a swap on the general. Can they clean him up? Can oh I have a by We have blows him up. That's a buyback now. All right, here comes the swap. Tidehunter. No ravage for 60 seconds. We have to use the zone as much as can. But Roger, steal that very same. Oh, they're, they're two rolling polies. Two rolling bowlers all over the place. We have another swashbuckle. And Roger will be using this to full effect to stun out Kezu. And Dendi is able to clean up a couple more heroes. Buyback does come from Weeha. Oh, oh my god, he played that twice. He did. I have not seen that in a long time. <laughs> that is pretty dirty. <laughs> it is. Alright, so... Maybe this, uh... 
you know, this is the throw zone, right? You walk into enemy base, you feed a little bit, then they do the same thing, and you kind of just keep tossing them back and forth. Viper is strong, right? Mjolnir, Hurricane Pike, he's not that strong. I lied. 45, so he can try to hold without the ventral spirit. A lot of them will be up again very shortly. Oh, Roll here it comes. Again by Rubik. He's gonna get the stun onto the Viper and catch Cinder as well. In fact, it might be a double stun, in fact. No, not gonna be. Top lane, though. Looks like they wanna get the Mega Ring very important. Crystallize. It's up to the infinite toss onto Gork McGork. Attempting to get out, but the right click will suffice with the BKB activated. And in the meantime, look at Tomato. He's a desolator. He is right clicking so much. He has the 200 attack speed talent. Good God. But he is the last remaining member for now on mid or feed. Have to think that this game might finally come to an end as the curse crown comes into effect. Dendi, better be careful, man. Tomato does a lot of damage. The Ravager is completely whipped. Kezu's going to be up in seven seconds. Look at this damage with Bedlam with the nice rules. Keeping him alive for now. Dendi. Getting focused down the oh, swamp, into the fountain, and Denny's dead. Has 100 seconds on the deck. The Rolf comes out from Roger as well. Nah, Rolf. Rolf is Denny's new nickname, apparently, and that's he still has no buyback, right? <laughs> yeah, why was he just standing there for so long? I was wondering the same thing. This is Midas Mode, Shannon. Look Anything goes. You need to get a crit on this. So does the does Bedlam deal physical damage? No, it's magical. Damage. It still deals a ridiculous amount of damage. Quite good. It is uh, somewhat short range, but. That is true, but and I guess... It, and it kind of revolves around you, so... Yeah, but he has tools, right? He's got the Blink Force, Yules, and he yeah. also has the uh, Shadow Realm, so we can kind of avoid a lot of the damage. He bought something. Oh, he bought a Maelstrom. Okay. okay. So I assume he's going to just sell the Veil. Yeah, I can't imagine he'd be using it very often anymore. Their needs to hit levels real bad. That charge... Is, is that what they need? Well, one of the things... Okay, one of many. I don't know, dude. We're going down the checklist, and that's uh, quite low this on the list. This is still winnable, opinion. honestly, for mid or feed. Well, I mean, we have yet to see a level 25 Dark Willow come into effect, so see if it's scary or not. Scary. It does look scary. <laughs> Good God, the Shadow Realm hits for 660 max damage. Oh, you get the talent. With the talent, that? yeah. Tickening. Huh. That's a Laguna Blade. It is. Okay, so... This, uh, this Pangolier here was kind of funny, right? Sometimes he feels super impactful, and sometimes we see him just bounce... Or, you know, bounce off the walls. It thing. feels like a very easy... It... Uh, is it, though? Because he can just use the shield crash immediately, right? Yeah. I guess it doesn't happen too much. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, General might be in some trouble. Charge from Viper off? ult is there. The swap... Maybe a little bit untimely, but they'll find the kill at the 100 seconds with no hugs on. What's he doing here by himself? What do you mean? He's scouting. <laughs> Alright guys, I found him! He's gathering the intelligence. Gotta let them uh, know what's going on. Charge, is that a level 20 yet? Nope. Still hoping for it. Is there a reason why uh, Weehaw's holding on to his last skill point? The talent tree? Uh, he's probably asking his teammates what's better. Oh, okay. First time on the hero. Not really sure, guys. Asking the resident if I were to pick, warrior I, expert. I think I picked Swashbuckle. How about you? I can't imagine okay. that. He did not. All right. We roll. He rolls for eight seconds. Mm hmm Down for six. Okay. Is that updated? Is that yes, yes. It is. All right. Let's see how it works. This is kind of cool. Again, have yet to see these heroes in a lot of cases be level 25, so pretty cool. Yep, agreed. And have yet to see Sinner hit 20 the... in like the past 20 games. Oh, so <laughs> <in addition>. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's okay. I'm good friends with Sinner. You know, keep it up and... This is a really big rush. This is it a is. pressure shard. Which probably just give to Seneco, I would assume. I couldn't imagine to give it to anyone else. A lot of 25 heroes in this game. I'm a big fan of the, the tiny 3 toss charge. That's so good. It was pretty strong. Yep. For a 5 second avalanche. Yeah, it's also good, right? I guess with the toss, the, toss the, the chain. Yep. Alright, Roche will be 3. Not even an attempt here. Okay, oh, alright, Cinderin's almost level 20, he's about 200 experience away, he's picked up his BKB, this could be the big game changer. Not have the tome, really need a tome, Oh friend. boy. We're not gonna see him hit 20, they, they do scan, 
Ain't no fate. Ain't no. Ain't no. Kazu yep. has the swap available. They have Aegis, Cheese, and Refresher Shark. Uh, Yeehaw. Showing it just rolling out. Careful. Jumps back up the cliff. See up another 14 seconds for Rapid to connect on two. Here's the oh, Refresher, refresher Rapid. Shark. But here's Terrorize though. Three heroes running back to base for now. Viper's trying to right click. They'll take out one. That's the Pugna again. Mitter feet Flight. destroying. That's the Aegis. Remember, he is surrounded for now. Where's Tomato? He's on the sideline. Just Killing Seneco. Up left and right. First Flight gets the toss up two times. Has another one to work with. Dendi with the shadow. Fiend ultimate. He gets a decent amount of damage coming at him. Dork looks to be next. That is four dead for Mitter feet is Tomato. Again, the last remaining member. I don't think he can hold this by himself. This you know, it's four dead, but Keizu's got his uh, Vengeful Spirit Illusion from the Agatops. True, stealing a decent amount. DC, Tomato gets swapped. Trying to take out Chris Lug. He'll right. find it with the Keizu. Oh my god, but... the stolen Bedlam does so much damage. That is going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. Keizu's the end of the kill. <laughs> Even though he's dead, that's the beauty of Agon and Scepter. Yep. Game one was a doozy, I have to say. This was a back and forth.